if we were to go out uh, for a night on the town, uh, where would you take me and would I survive? Uh, <clears throat> we would take you I, home. I think, um, I think we would introduce you to the, the Danish smurf, well, the open sandwich thing, which uh, goes together with beer and snaps. Uh, that that would that would be something we cherish a lot, and we also find c c quite unique, and one of the few real excuses to to drink snaps, uh, which we like. So, so, at, what point, we, so, we, so at what point? At, at what point would I be done for the night? Within fifteen minutes, an hour, or could you think I could hang with you guys? Snaps is tough. Um, it's surprising in a different way than anything else you drink in your life. It's it's uh, it's strong, but it's also it has an effect that is a little different than any other alcohol I've ever tried. I think that we are at that stage where we're kind of mature enough to not go completely ballistic. I think you would survive. Um, how old are you? I'm forty-two. Yeah, so you you you're entering that stage where you quickly get sleepy from wine. <laughs> And, and <clears throat> so the, that's where the snaps is a brilliant idea for Matt's. It, it's a spark instead of a pillow on your head, okay? So uh, beer and snaps, not too much beer, just to, to get the herring down. And then the snaps is a great start. And then that would develop into a long and fine and beautiful night. And if we would start at around one o'clock with lunch, traditional Danish lunch with open face sandwiches and snaps, you would be uh, tired and happy at three o'clock in the morning and we would put you back in your hotel. That's the plan. That, that's a very kind way of saying that I wouldn't make it. So I, I, I do appreciate <laughs> you uh, uh, being so kind, but I, I guess my question to both of you is, are you taken aback by the type of response this film has gotten? Yes, it's overwhelming. It's, uh, you know, this film, comes from the heart and, and comes into a time of confinement and death and bankruptcy and, and people are sharing body liquids and are dancing and are drinking in, in, in crazy ways. So we've been a little nervous and, uh, and it's a great relief that that is being received, received like this. I, 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 to be quite frank, I'm not sure you guys are getting enough praise because it's one of the more heartfelt um, films of the award season, 2020, 2021. And it, it really sits with you. I mean, when audiences come see this film, what do you hope they take from it? Uh, yeah, it's a, a lot of things for, for different audiences. There is a, we have the experience, we've been showing it for the uh, for audiences uh, around uh, Denmark a few times. And we've experienced that we have all, all paths of life in there. We have uh, young kids, we have kid, people our age, and we have uh, our, our parents' generation in there watching it. But, uh, and they can watch it with different eyes, obviously. The, the kids can, you know, recognize themselves in that situation and they can, they can uh, see their teachers up there uh, and, and the older generation can watch their, their past. But what I think they have in common, I think you leave the, the, the movie theater with a sense of loving life, that you simply love life. Uh, and that I think is also the reason why it can travel uh, outside the Danish borders, because whether we have a lot or a little in common with the alcohol uh, theme, uh, the, the, the the life embracing uh, theme of the film is, is what's overtaking everything. So th well, Thomas, when you wrote this film, was it always Mads that you had in mind for this role? Right, I mean, Mads was on the project before it really became a project. I, when it was only, uh, you know, in the beginning it was the idea just to celebrate alcohol. I looked at world history and I looked at all the fantastic accomplishments that have been done by people who are drunk, basically. I was fascinated with thinking about Churchill sending in hundreds of thousands of people 
civilians into war, in, in fisher boats, into war, and, and thinking he might not have been sober at that point. And what if he had been sober? And what would have happened to world history? And what if Adolf had had schnapps for breakfast? You know, would he have, would he have won? You know, I, I was, I, I was thinking, and at that time there was no idea for a script. It was just this idea of digging into alcohol. And already at that stage, I talked to Mats. And I, I had wanted to work with Mats for a long time and um, doing the hunt together manifested that. And um, uh, yeah, so it's written for him, definitely. Mads, when you heard about this idea, what was your first reaction and uh, how soon did you say yes? I said yes right away. I, I, I've been looking for an excuse to work with Thomas for seven long years, uh, but the pitch came right after we wrapped up the hunt. It was already in his mind. Um, and that, as Thomas said, it was a different kind of idea at that point. I also knew that uh, that Thomas would eventually throw, uh, you know, friendship in there. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I said it again, I repeat myself, but you know, a theme of embracing life. Uh, and uh, a tribute to alcohol and a tribute to life. Uh, and, and I wasn't disappointed when I saw the script at all. I loved it. Um, and the theory itself was just a common sense. I was like, yeah, you don't have to write a paper about that. We all know that. We all know that two glasses of wine will lift the conversation and, and make us brave and, and take some of the pain away and, and, and make life smooth. So, so, so that part was very interesting. And it, it wasn't even... Um, controversial in my in my mind uh, that that somebody has said that uh, on, on a piece of paper um the, the the big difference between two glasses of wine and and two bottles of wine is obviously a theme that we also deal with i'm done <laughs> did we lose each other i think we did are you talking to us I can't hear anything and I can't see you. I can hear Thomas. No, I'm, I'm, I'm here. There was noise in the background. I, I'll, I'll edit out the, the pause. I just didn't want it to yeah. edit the recording. Um, Thomas, was there a moment what, when you were watching Mads doing what Mads does and you were like, holy mackerel, this movie is going to be special? Yeah, that was a couple of times. Uh, where I watched Mats's face, uh, it's the film's conducted like this: that there's a lot of talk and jokes and blah blah blah, and then there's the break where Mats fills out the screen with his face without saying anything, and through that saying so much. And in in some of those moments, I guess the first time was at the dinner scene in the beginning. And when Matt was tearing up, I felt moved. And I was hoping that this will move a lot of other people as well. When I watched uh, the dance at the end, I had this uh, small flicker of hope and sensation that this, this, this is going to go down history. <laughs> um, uh, it was all very emotional uh, making this movie. Uh, also for private reasons. And throughout making it, I felt it was very important uh, that this would work out and that this would become more than just a film that would disappear again. Uh, we made this movie uh, to honor my daughter who passed away. Um, and, and therefore every moment was precious. And uh, Matt filled out those moments uh, uh, fantastically uh, and overwhelmingly many, many times. I felt like her spirit was with this film the whole time, um, to be quite frank. Well, I feel that too. And uh, if you feel the love coming from the screen, it's probably it probably has to do with all the love that I met from Mats and from the other actors and from the film crew who dropped everything they had in their hands to embrace me and my family and what happened. And if you, if you laugh for moments, 
it's probably because there's four actors who did their very best to make their director laugh at a time where it was very close to impossible. But they, they actually succeeded in moments. Um, but Ida is all over this movie. And uh, she, knew, she knew Matt very, very well. She was supposed to be in the movie. So it was all very emotional. Was that the toughest part for you, Mads? Was that the toughest part? Having the weight of just the emotion behind this whole piece. No, I, I never felt the weight of anything. Um, the toughest part was to see uh, your, loved, your beloved friends being in a situation that was impossible to lift anything. <clears throat> there was nothing we could lift for him. Uh, at the end of the day, he, he was carrying his own burden. Um, but I think it was just tough for all of us to um, to be part of that. Uh, there's, this is something you never wish for anyone. Um, and the, I don't think, I would never say that this was a tough film. Um, it was a very beautiful process and a, and a very emotional one as well. And, and it turned into probably something else than we set out to do without even changing one word uh, in the script. Um, it was just implicit that it was now taking a different turn. It was crucial that, that it, it was going to be life embracing. Uh, and, and we didn't discuss it, it just happened. Some things, sometimes the best things happen in the, in the process, in my opinion. And in taking a lighter turn, I, Thomas, how is it that Mads can make everything look cool? Because I'm watching him answer these answers and light the cigarette and the, I mean, he just, I mean, I'm just like, man, I, teach me how to be cool, Mads. <laughs> it's the cigarette. Do not smoke out there. If you do, quit. Um, I'm not trying to be cool at all. Uh, I can be very uncool. Just ask my kids and my wife and my friends. There's plenty of times where I'm really uncool. Uh, it's not a conscious choice. This guy is annoyingly good looking and I'm trying in every movie I do to, un to dress him down, but it doesn't really work. I'm giving him glasses and weird haircuts <laughs> and he's still great looking. <laughs> I, I, I guess the thing that, that I'm kind of taken aback by is that even when he messed his hair up in an, in, a, in an intentional manner to make us look wrong, he proves our point, didn't he? <laughs> exactly. I'm running for president. <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I, honestly, I, I guess I guess my what I want to ask is, what do you get stopped in the street for more? Is it because you're going to be part of the Harry Potter uh, universe in short order? Is it for Hannibal? I mean, what, what, do, what do people ask you when they see you in the streets? It varies a lot uh, from country to country. And also what's been, um, all of a sudden something has come out in a country five years later and I will be stopped uh, maybe in England or in America uh, because of uh, The Hunt or uh, a dark comedy I made back home. Uh, and, and obviously there are Hannibals everywhere. So, 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 so Hannibal is also a big thing of that. But, it, it varies a lot. It, uh, there's no really, there's no science to it right now. It's, it, it, one of the good things about us getting the chance to work over here is that if they like what they see, they get curious and then they start watching our smaller Danish products. Uh, and, um, and that's just, uh, that's all we can ask for if we can, we can make our films travel in that sense. Now, this is going to be a moment where I think you're going to feel a little uncomfortable, uh, Mads, and this is really for Thomas. To the voters that are out there right now um, who are deciding who to put on the ballot for, say, Critics' Choice or, say, these other guilds, it, it, I think it's a travesty that Mads isn't on the final ballot in a lot of these votes. So, Thomas, campaign for him. Watch the movie. See what he can do. Mats is, um, he's the finest instrument you can find in an orchestra. He can do anything you want. And uh, he's a fantastic collaborator and cl collaborator. 
and he's a great, great friend. Uh, but I think the movie speaks for itself. I think it's so raw and so emotional and so generous what, and so precise what Matz is giving us. And mind you, I'm challenging him a lot. I'm asking him to defend an emotional, very detailed journey and to be funny and to be tragic and to be drunk at very certain levels without serving him alcohol on set. Uh, now that's acting. It's, he, he was very busy um, and, and still he had to carry his friend through. So um, my God, he deserves all the praise in the world. You didn't think I would let you off the hook, Thomas. Mads, why should voters be looking at Thomas and adding him to their ballots as we get into this award season? Watch the film. <clears throat> I'm off the hook there. No. Um, there's so many qualities that you're looking for in a director. And I, and I think that Thomas possesses all of them. Um, fantastic storyteller. He can do it in a grand manner. He can do it in a very minimalistic manner. Uh, his way of communicating with his actors is one of the things that I, sometimes strikes me is that that often actors have to translate what the director wants where it's supposed to be opposite I always think and Thomas is very very good at treating us very individual when he gives us directions he knows exactly what to tune up and down on me on Lars on, on, on Thomas in the film to make us work and to click with us and then you just have a fantastic eye of a place, putting, putting ordinary people in very extraordinary situations that makes us relate to them. You have to have an eye as a director. You have to have an eye for the real thing and the sincere thing in order to pull it off. And he has a complete unique eye like nobody else for that. Was it uncomfortable? I enjoyed it. <laughs> Does that make me a crazy person? The <laughs> following message is brought to you by Thomas and Mads, and I approve this message. <laughs> I feel we've bonded in our discussion, so are we now best friends? Yeah, you have to go through the, uh, the snaps and beer test, though. But I think you can pass it, and then we're very close to being best friends. Yeah, you would, so basically, need, you're, you, would so a night, you would need a night in Copenhagen town. You're our next best friend already, but to step to do the last step, yep. you need to come here and have some snaps. <laughs> <laughs>